Shabbat Shalom. That was Temple Emmanuel's extraordinary member, violinist Basil Alter, who joined us last year on this night when, because of Omicron, we could only dream of worshiping in person. Welcome back and thank you, Basil. I'm Rabbi Joshua Davidson, joined by my colleagues from Temple Emmanuel, Rabbis Amy Ehrlich, Andy Kahn, and Sarah Sepaden, and Cantors Mo Glasman and Sarah Anderson, and from Temple Israel, Rabbi David Gelfand and Cantor Irena Altschul. We, the members of two historic congregations, have come together tonight to celebrate Shabbat and to mark International Holocaust Remembrance Day, the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau in a most extraordinary way. So welcome to those of you from Emmanuel, including many from our young members circle, to those from Temple Israel, including the families of Schuyler Howard Potter and Justin Brown, who tomorrow become B'nai Mitzvah, and to those of you joining us from the wider community as well. As we gather against the backdrop of a week of horrific gun violence in California, charges of police brutality and murder in Memphis, and an ongoing war in Ukraine, today we learned of a terrorist attack on those gathered for Shabbat worship at a synagogue in Jerusalem, killing at least seven and wounding more. On the very day, the world recalls last century's most egregious example of humanity's inhumanity, the Shoah. May the one who makes peace in the heavens above spread a tabernacle of peace over Jerusalem and over us all. And so it was on this date, 78 years ago, the men of the 322nd Rifle Division of the Red Army, fighting their way across western Poland, stumbled upon an enormous complex of buildings surrounded by electrified barbed wire fences and watchtowers. With no idea what they were seeing, the troops approached cautiously lest German soldiers be hidden nearby. Finally, at about three in the afternoon, they entered the facility and learned its purpose when they discovered piles of corpses and came face to face with thousands of emaciated men, women, and children, most barely able to walk. These were the 9,000 Jewish prisoners left behind without food or water when the SS abandoned Auschwitz as the Russians approached. The other 60,000 had been sent on a death march. This evening, we commemorate that moment of liberation with the violins of hope about which and from which you'll hear more later in the evening when we are joined by the Orchestra of St. Luke's. And we commemorate the moment with our most honored guests, themselves instruments of hope, four individuals who survived the Nazi atrocities. To share the story of the violin on which Basel played Eli Eli, O oh God, my God, we welcome survivor Millie Barron to the Bima. Born in Oshmiana, Poland in 1926, shortly after the Nazis arrived, Millie lost her father when the town's Jewish men were rounded up, ordered to dig their own graves, and then were shot. Millie, at the age of 14, was sent with her mother to Stutthof concentration camp where they survived more than four years and survived again when they were forced on a death march as the Red Army approached. They spent four and a half years in a displaced persons camp before receiving visas to the United States where they settled in New York.
I'll start with Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Crafted by Master Luthier Johann Gottlob figure in about 1800, the Moshe Weinstein violin you just heard is dedicated to first of the Weinstein family violinist makers. As a young man, Moshe heard a violin for the first time when a klezmer troupe came to his shtetl to play at a rich man's wedding. He was so mesmerized by the sound that he followed the, the musicians out of town. His mother found him, dragged him home, punished him, then bought Moshe a simple instrument which he taught himself to play. He then studied it in music academy in Vilna and, and learned to repair string instruments in Warsaw. In 1938, he and his wife Golda moved to Palestine and a year later opened a violin shop in Tel Aviv. Beginning a family tradition of helping young music prodigies. Now for the lighting of the Shabbat candles, we welcome three more cherished guests whose stories you'll hear later with their families to join Millie and her family, Martin Block, Natalie Sklar, and Rosa Plowner, who spoke to us last year. Billy, Martin, Natalie, Rosa, what an extraordinary honor it is to have you in our presence. Each of you an ember rescued from the conflagration, a spark glowing against the darkness whose presence brightens our troubled world with hope and our Jewish lives with purpose. We ask God's blessing upon you and your beloved families. May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God's countenance shine upon you and bring you favor in all your endeavors. Yisa Adonai Panavilecha Shalom. 
Your presence brings hope and brightness against the darkness. And in that spirit, we pray, as you have been blessed and God has blessed you and your families, may your blessings and our blessings be commingled as we pray that God will bless us with the ultimate gift of wholeness and of peace. Amen. 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 We'd like to, to light the candle now. Baruch Let's take this. Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hashem kirishanu bemitzvotam v'tzivanu v'halitnem we now turn to page 81 and rise for our call to worship the Barhu. Please join me responsively on the next page. Days pass and the years vanish, and we walk sightless among miracles. God, fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing. Let there be moments when your presence, like lightning, illumines the darkness in which we walk. Help us to see wherever we gaze that the bush burns unconsumed, and we, clay touched by God, will reach out for holiness and exclaim in wonder, how filled with awe is this place, and we did not know it. Be our inspiration in the tasks that confront us, both in seasons of joy and times of adversity. Send forth your light and your truth to lead us when doubt and confusion assail us. Help us remain constant in our devotion to you. Deepen our loyalty to the sacred obligations which rest upon us. May our hearts never turn away from that covenant and let our lives ever testify to our faith in you. We join together first in Hebrew, then in English. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, the Lord is, is one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Barushim Kivod Malchuto Le'olam 
Please be seated. Ve'afta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavcha v'chol nafshecha U'v'chol me'odecha Ve'ayu advarim ha'ele Asher anochi metzavecha Hayom alevavecha Veshinanta ham levanecha Vedibarta baham Veshivtecha bevetecha Ovelechtecha vaderech Uvshoch becha uvkomecha Uksartam leot al yadecha Vehayule totafod benenecha Uchtavtam al mezuzot betecha Uvisharecha Lema hantiskeru Vaasitem et kol mitzvotai Vietem kedoshim lelohechem Ahani Adonai elohechem Asher hotzet yetchem Meeretz mitzrayim Liyot lachem lelohim Ahani Eighty three. What does it mean to be a Jew? You shall be holy. In the face of the many, to stand for the one. In the presence of fragments, to make them whole. What does it mean to be a Jew? You shall be a holy people, to hold fast to our vision of truth, to retain our faith in tomorrow. Holy in our past is the memory of redemption from Egyptian bondage. Holy in our day is the hope of a redemption we still await. Twice holy in our past are those who gave their lives to hallow this world. Holy is the Jew today and tomorrow who bears witness to the goodness of life. And holy are those whose lives are songs in freedom's cause. Shabbat 
את השבת לעשות את השבת לדורותם ברית עולם ברית עולם Turn now to page 86 as we rise for the tefillah. Together, infinite is your power, O God. Great is your gift of life. In loving kindness, you sustain the world. Through the endless flow of your blessings, you preserve all of creation. You uphold the falling and heal the sick, free the captive and keep faith with your people in death as in life. Who is like you, author of life and death, we praise you, God, the source of eternal life. You may be seated. Tonight we gather in honor of those who lived during the dark night of the Shoah. This moment of honoring we recognize is infused with pain and sorrow for all who suffered then and for all who continue to suffer in the aftermath of this unspeakable horror. And so we pause now to give space for that pain and to open up space for all who are struggling at this time, whether struggling with illness 
or heartache, or perhaps struggling with the brokenness of our world. Sadly, that brokenness was underscored this week as we witnessed the communities of Monterey Park, Half Moon Bay, Memphis, and tonight, Jerusalem, shattered by terror, by brutality, and by gun violence. So tonight, we acknowledge all the wounds among us as we turn our hearts to God for healing. If there's someone you know in need of healing or strength, I invite you to say their names aloud now so that they may be woven into the fabric of our prayers. For all those you mentioned, and for all those you are holding in your hearts, we continue now with our Misha Berach prayer on page 125. Take a moment now for silent reflection.
Please rise as we turn to page 231 for Alenu. Let us adore the ever-living God. We render praise unto you, who spread out the heavens and established the earth, whose glory is revealed in the heavens above, and whose greatness is manifest. Page 244. We turn now to the words of Hannah Senesh, a poet and partisan whose life was lost at the hands of the Nazis while she was trying to redeem the lives of her own countrymen. There are stars up above so far away we only see their light, long, long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with people that we loved. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us as we live our days. These are the ways we remember. As we gather to remember the six million souls who were sacrificed to Nazi hatred, we also take into our hearts 
the victims of today's shooting in Jerusalem, along with all those who lost their lives to gun violence this week. This time of tender memory, we add the names of our own loved ones, those who are members of this congregational family, to all those. Barry Burkule, Leonard Bloom, Lewis Book, Edith M. Brilloff, Sherman Cohen, Andrew Cohen, Peter Dilber, Alan F. Doniger, Margaret Faganson, Gussie Fenmore, Myron Mike Fisher, Abraham Fior, Murray Forer, Albert Fox, William S. Furman, Arthur Gleit, Jules Arthur Gottlieb, Henry Greenberg, Morton M. Haves, Dorothy Herman, Frederick Howard, Peter Jacobson, Jeanette A. Judson, Alfred Kahn, Mary Kestenbaum, Maxwell Kleiman, Nancy Kobisher, Anna Later, Robert Landis, Sidney J. Lemmer, Rosa Makas, Marion Mantle, Frank Miscarry, Corinne Natelson, Melvin Newman, Mildred Rader, Jane Rittmaster, Barry Rosenberg, Betty Rosenblatt, Barry S. Rubin, Thomas William St. John, Muriel Salzburg, Philip Samo, Lillian Sandler, J. J. G. Schatz, Frederick Schaffman, Rachel Schantfeld, Myron Chevelle, Arnold Slovis, Hannah Smiley, Stuart Snyder, Finney Strauss, Dorothea Warshaw, Kenneth Wilpon, Milton Wucher. As well, on behalf of the sacred community of Temple Israel of the City of New York, our families lovingly remember on this Shabbat Jules Aaron, Irving Abelson, Leonard D. Carr, Marion Kasdan, Bernard Davis, Neshama Deutsch, David Rubner, Gladys Feigenbaum, Seymour Friedman, Seal Friedman, Sheldon Kimmelman, Saja Kramer, Dorothy Mallets, Rosalie Marks, Jack Menchel, Marvin J. Mencher, Daniel Milstein, Avodah K. Offit, Hani Olliner, Celia Sachs, Nathan Sachs, Jack Schneider, Joseph G. Shapiro, Paul Weinberg, Kenneth Wilpon. And as well, we lovingly remember those who have lost loved ones whom we remember at this time of year, but also those who have lost loved ones recently. To each of them, our hearts go out, our thoughts, our prayers are with them. During the period of Shloshim, we remember those loved ones taken from recent days. We invite those who are in recent mourning, please to rise. And those who are marking a yard site, we would ask that you rise as well. And now as one congregational family, we stand together to recite the words of the Kaddish on page 245. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shumei rabah, v'yoma divrach yurutei v'yom lich malchutei, Bachaychon of Yomechon, Bachayedachol Beit Yisrael, Baagalav Isman Kari, the Imru Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabbah Mivorach Leolamala Omeil Maya. Yit Barach Vish Dabach Vit Paar Vit Ramam Vit Nase. Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shemei de Kudisha Brihu. La Ela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata. Tush Bachata Venechemata. 
Ta ami ram bi oma vi imru amen. Yehesh lama raba min shemaya v'chayim. Aleinu vi al ko Yisrael vi imru amen. O se shalom bi mromav. Hu ya se shalom. Aleinu vi al ko Yisrael vi imru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. And let us say together, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. These things never end. The sand and the sea, the rush of the waters, the flash of the heavens, the Shabbat Shalom. I am honored to introduce this unique concert performed on violins once played in concentration camps because the SS found it amusing to force Jewish musicians to perform Beethoven as the families were led to the gas chambers. On violins smuggled out of Poland, buried for safekeeping in Holland, and even thrown from death trains, causing friends by Jews in despair. On violins that belongs to Jewish partisans who found comfort in music while fighting Nazis. Tonight, these violins fill our historic sanctuary with moving melodies, thanks to Amnon and Absalom Weinstein who spent years restoring them, a gift to us and to generations to come, a gift of memory, a gift of hope. As Jews, it is a mitzvah for us to remember. It is baked into our DNA. But memory alone can trap us in despair, in bitterness and lust for revenge. Hope. Hatikva is an essential counterbalance, the beacon of light that gives memory mystical power to prevent despair from having the last word, power that allows us to move on. At a moment when Holocaust denial is on the rise, 
when young people know little about the final solution and the number of survivors is de declining. Temple Emanuel is honored to bring 39 of these violins to our museum for the first exhibition in New York and 10 violins to tonight's concert when the Orchestra of St. Luke's brings them back to life. 78 years after the Shoah, in the most populated Jewish city in a country that once refused Jewish refugees escaping Nazi brutality, in the largest synagogue in the world, in the presence of survivors who suffered the unspeakable, a concert of memory, a concert of hope. Tonight, I feel a special sense of Jewish pride, and I hope you will too. To introduce the Max Becker violin, on which, on which Misha Elman in a gondola impromptu will be played. Please welcome our own rabbi, Rabbi Emmy Ehrlich. It's my pleasure to welcome Martin to the pulpit. Would you join us? Martin was born in the small Polish town of Ivy in 1935. When he was six years old, he lost his father to a Nazi roundup of educated Jews. And because Martin's mother was certain that she and her two sons were destined for the same fate, she snuck them through the fence surrounding the ghetto and they escaped. They survived by joining 1,200 Jewish partisans and eventually they wound up in the displaced persons camp in Bergen-Belsen. Five years later, they moved to the United States where Martin studied electrical engineering and became the youngest ever chief engineer at Bulova. Good evening, everybody. I, as the war started, I was five years old. My brother did all the social work, but unfortunately, he has passed away. I'd like to introduce Max Baker's violin. Born in Vilna in 1916, Max Baker followed his footsteps of his father, an oboist in the Vilna Symphony Orchestra, by playing violin in music halls, nightclubs, and cafes while still a teenager and then studying in the Vilna Conservatory of Music. After Germany invaded Poland in 1939, he was drafted and sent to combat as a soldier to the front. But before he could fight, he was captured by the German and sent to a hard labor camp at Stylak 18A, 8A of Lower Silesia. Max survived because the camp orchestra members wanted his talent and 63 Jewish prisoners collected enough money and bribed the guard to buy him an instrument. He became the orchestra's only Jewish member. As the tide of the war shifted and the prisoners were sent to death, to death march, Max escaped and ended up in a displaced person camp in Benedictine Monastery of St. Otian, the Bavarian countryside. There he joined the ex-concentration camp orchestra, whose slogan was, Am Israel Chai, the Jewish people live. In May of 1948, Leonard Bernstein conducted the orchestra for two concerts. In 1949, Max had relatives in Brooklyn who found his way across the Atlantic, his violin in hand.
Good evening, I am Mo Glasman, senior cantor here at Temple Emmanuel, and I am pleased to call upon our next guest, who will read the story of the Zimmerman Korngold violin, on which John Williams' theme for Schindler's List will be played. Please welcome Natalie Sklar. Born in Krakow, once war broke out, Natalie and her parents moved to her grandfather's home in Kaluzh, which saved her life since the non-aggression pact between Hitler and Stalin put that town under Soviet control. But once Hitler broke that agreement, the Nazis arrived quickly, and Natalie watched her father be lined up, beaten, and taken away by the Gestapo. She never saw him again. Her mother decided to move them to Lvov, hoping to blend in with the Christian population. She bribed their way past police until she could buy Polish passports. Then she rented a room with an elderly seamstress. Not knowing they were Jewish, the landlady took Natalie to church and enrolled her in classes to prepare her for her communion. The mother and daughter were eventually caught and imprisoned. Although guards tried to beat them into admitting they were Jews, their Polish passports protected them. They were eventually evacuated to Ravensbrück and 11 months later were shipped on cattle cars to Denmark and then on to Sweden. The Zimmerman Krongold violin. When Shimon Krongold, a wealthy Warsaw industrialist, decided to buy himself a violin, he turned to one of the best craftsman in the city, Jakob Zimmerman, who inlaid a Star of David onto the back of the instrument and glued a label inside reading. I made this violin for my loyal friend, Shimon Krongold, Jakob Zimmerman, Warsaw, 1924. After the Nazis invaded Poland, Shimon escaped with his violin to Uzbekistan, where he died of typhus. Years later, a Jew from Tashkent appeared at the home of Shimon's brother, Chaim, in Israel, carrying Shimon's violin in an old blanket. Chaim never discovered how the stranger came into the possession of the instrument. But when the man demanded money for it, Chaim paid $250 for the only memory he had left of his brother, other than the, a photograph of a young Shimon holding the same violin.
I'm Rabbi David Gelfand of Temple Israel of the City of New York, and I am truly honored to present tonight's final survivor, to speak about the Marpurgo violin, on which Bach's concerto for two violins in D minor will be played. Please welcome Rose Plavner, who will be turning 101 years young in just a matter of weeks. She will do so just in a few weeks in March. Born in 1922 in Bezden, Poland, she survived the Kamyanko Ghetto and forced labor in an Auschwitz subcamp and then escaped a death march by hiding in a barrack. Of the seven siblings in her family, only she and two brothers remained alive at liberation. While still in Poland, she married Felix Plavner of blessed memory. Then they moved to Germany and finally to the United States. Here they settled in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey and forged a vibrant circle of friends and shared their lives with 25 other Holocaust families. Shabbat Shalom. My name is Fiona Pfeffer, and I am Rosa Plano's great-granddaughter. From a family with deep roots in Italy, Gualtiero Morpurgo was given a violin by his mother with the prescient advice that while he might not become a famous musician, the music will help you in desperate moments of life and will widen your horizons. Do not give up. Sooner or later, it will prove me right. Not long after, she was deported on the first train from Milan to Auschwitz, and he was sent to a forced labor camp where he found hope and strength playing box partita with frozen fingers. When the war ended, he used his training as an engineer to help convert cargo ships to smuggle survivors into British-held Palestine. For this work, he was awarded the Medal of Jerusalem in 1992 by Yitzhak Rabin. Gualtiero continued playing the violin that had been his lifelong companion until the age of 97 when he could no longer bow the strings. After his death in 2012, after attending a Violence of Hope concert in Rome, his family donated his instrument to Violence of Hope so it could be played in concert halls.
to conclude this evening's observance, this musical gift of memory, uh, we will sing the words, Am Israel Chai, through generations the people of Israel will live on. We are aware that there are others in the community this evening who are also survivors. If you are a survivor, we would be honored if you would join us so that we could sing with you and to you and through our voices acknowledge that the people of Israel in fact do live on. So any survivors are welcome to join us as our clergy will join us as well and we will sing these words together. This is arranged by Joseph Ness for this very moment. It is the first time that Amis Rahel Chai has been set for chamber string ensemble and just so delighted that the talented musicians of St. Luke's will play this with all of us. So we'll take a moment to invite everyone up. While they're coming up, could we just offer one more communal thank you to these extraordinary musicians? Am Israel, 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 Chai. 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 Oda bin Chai, Oda bin Chai, Oda bin, Oda bin, Oda bin Chai. Oda bin Chai, Oda bin Chai, Oda bin, Oda bin. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Shabbat Shalom.
pulled him again.